Hi, I'm Russell Flannery, editor at large at Forbes. I've been reporting for Asia for the last three decades. It's a great pleasure to have with us today uh, one of America's most uh, prominent Asia hands, Steve Roach. Steve is the former chief economist at Morgan Stanley uh, and also the uh, former chairman of Morgan Stanley Asia. He's the author of the recently published book, Accidental Conflict, America, China, and the Clash of False Narratives. Uh, Steve is also currently a senior fellow at Yale. Welcome, Steve. Thank you, Russell. Great to see you again. Um, so, of course, uh, the C. Blinken meeting uh, made headlines around the world. Headlines are still continuing today, I guess, in the after that aftermath of that meeting and some of the comments that have uh, come uh, from it. How do you size up the meeting yourself? Well, I think the, the meeting uh, roughly came in uh, around what I was expecting with one notable disappointment, but I have to admit that my expectations were set pretty low ahead of time in light of the comments made by um, U.S. officials, notably Kurt Campbell, who was the, the senior uh, Asia person um, in, in the White House and with the ongoing uh, sort of negative rhetoric coming out of uh, Beijing. Uh, the one area that I found um, disturbing was the failure of both the U.S. and China to agree on a restarting of military to military negotiations. I mean, uh, you know, the last month we've had near misses uh, in the Taiwan Strait, in the South China Sea. Now we have reports of um, uh, you know, a, a Chinese um, outpost uh, of sort of unknown functionality in Cuba with potential uh, uh, training aspects to a, uh, a mission of uh, presumably Chinese uh, uh, military personnel. So. The failure to really um, have a direct link, communication link between the two militaries is, I think, uh, worrisome, possibly quite disturbing. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned on Twitter uh, that the exchange looked something like a diplomatic drive-by. Um, which I mentioned uh, in, in one of my own articles uh, about the, the, uh, the meeting. Uh, what did you mean by that? And uh, what do we take from it that uh, the seating arrangement and the whole kind of uh, visuals uh, were so different from what we saw, for instance, when, uh, uh, when John Kerry uh, was there with the similar uh, U.S. government representatives meeting up with President Xi and China's representatives only a few years ago. Even more recently than that, just um, uh, Bill Gates sitting down, you know, a few days before Blinken, mm. uh, you know, a typical Chinese meeting setting, you know, the, the stuffed uh, armchairs sitting side by side as opposed to, um, you know, a, a clear leader sitting at the head of a table with his guest, um, you know, off to the, to the side. Mm -hmm. um, what I meant by the drive-by was was the fact that the, the the meeting itself took 35 minutes, and meetings like this are always done with consecutive translations. So you have to divide the actual time in half, uh, and then you know you read the transcript of the remarks, and you know taking out the pleasantries of you know nice to see you again probably less than 10 minutes of, uh, of remarks from uh, each side. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I meant by the drive-by, you know, not a real, you know, in-depth um, discussion of issues. That's not to say that Blinken didn't have longer discussions with um, uh, Wang Yi, the, the chief uh, party uh, head of uh, Foreign Policy and the Foreign Minister Xin Gong, uh, those were more extensive meetings. But even the readout of those meetings um, didn't, didn't really point to any 
uh, major, major breakthrough that would uh, lead you to believe that, um, you know, we, we've got this relationship under control and in a better place today than it was before the meeting. Mm. So then um, what does this mean for businesses and uh, investors? Well, I think, you know, the, the conclusion for the businesses is that, um, you know, the days of making a, uh, a 100% offshoring bet in China, personified by what Apple did for uh, close to 30 years, those days are over. Uh, China's still a, you know, great opportunity for offshoring. Uh, it still has a large market for uh, multinationals, including you know U.S.-based multinationals, to tap. But you, you want to have um, you know your eggs in in a number of baskets, not just in one. So Apple has sort of led the way of the 100% offshoring bet. Has started to play around with uh, India, and Vietnam, and others for still right now relatively small portions of its uh, offshore production but you know it's a statement and I think you know US companies uh, and investors need to take that example as important in guiding their own uh, uh, choices in making what has been a you know a pretty solid bet on on China is exclusively uh, the destination, the offshore destination of uh, first choice. Mm. What do you think all this means for uh, Chinese investment in the U.S. if we look at it from a China company point of view? Well, I mean, there is restrictions um, that are now uh, in place and likely to intensify uh, in the months ahead. There are there have been very uh, strong rumors that the Biden administration is, is about to issue new regulations on outbound U.S. direct investment into China, and they've already put um, restrictions on inbound uh, investments on a company by company basis, especially uh, in the technology area and. China is going tit for tat, you know, as, as a conflicted relationship would uh, predict. So it's, uh, you know, a much more contentious environment for cross-border investment flows as a result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've written and uh, spoke about the, uh, the importance of people-to-people uh, -people relations. Uh, one big... Um, gap in that area is, uh, for instance, the number of U.S. students in China today uh, compared with the number of Chinese students um, that are here uh, in the U.S. Uh, what kind of things can you envision happening um, uh, to, to, to advance the people-to-people -people side of the relationship between these two big countries, um, even as uh, politics uh, and economics re remains pretty contentious? Well, I think, um, you know, I write in my, my book, Accidental Conflict, that you mentioned earlier that trust building has got to be an important first step in conflict resolution. And the people to people piece of, of moving from distrust to trust is, is important. And, you know, there was some progress made, uh, at least some allusions to progress made during the, uh, the Blinken visit, notably uh, a commitment to increase the frequency of direct flights, which would be uh, terrific. I mean, I'm used to going nonstop back and forth uh, from New York to Beijing on a regular basis. The last time I went a couple of months ago, I had to fly through Dubai. It took me like 25 hours. Mm. So that would be a, a breakthrough. There was also some recognition that 
uh, student exchange programs, especially the uh, you know, very high profile successful efforts like the Fulbright program uh, are, there are plans to restart them. That would be good. It would be equally good if they could uh, uh, get back to the very easy issuance of the visas back and forth between um, uh, citizens in the country. And um, um, you know, I, th I think um, that all of that would, would go a long way. I'd also like to see uh, improvements in uh, of constraints on non-governmental organizations like NGOs to take the people-to-people -people, uh, improvements into civil society, civic society, which would, would really uh, uh, begin to rebuild uh, the, the cultural uh, bonds between our people. That, those are very important aspects of um, uh, reestablishing some semblance of, of trust. Yeah, yeah. Of course, those plane tickets uh, from my recent research are, are also, uh, for economy class anyways, some multiple of what they were in 2019, even if there's a seat now. Um, um, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I was, I was again, ast astonished when I you know, got the, the, the charge and urge on the website that there's only one seat left if I don't take this ridiculous fare, I'm going to lose that. So I grabbed it. And yeah. I'm yeah. still paying for it on an installment basis, which I've never done <laughs> on an air ticket in my life before. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's something to look forward to on the positive side, I guess, in the second half of the year. We'll see what happens. Thanks a lot uh, for joining us. Uh, hope to keep in touch with you uh, more in the future, Steve. Great to see you in person. Thank you, Russell. Pleasure to talk to you again.